Um, guys, I want to change it up a little bit and talk about Intel and talk about a, a part of the uh, capital market that we have at least been focused on um, and should continue to be. Uh, the news this morning involves Intel uh, signing an agreement with Brookfield to jointly uh, invest up to $30 billion right. uh, in what they're calling leading edge chip factories in Arizona. Uh, what is interesting about this is the structure of the financing itself and the way that Intel is now going about financing its construction of uh, these factories, which obviously is very expensive. Intel's going to pay for 51 percent of it. Brookfield uh, is going to fund 49 percent of it. This is Brookfield Asset Management, OK? It's an, not, uh, the, not the real estate right, part of it. Right. It's a global alternative asset manager. Intel will retain ownership of the factories, but of course Brookfield will have a very significant ownership position as well and conceivably will therefore reap a return on the invested capital that it has there or the financing. Uh, what does Intel say? Well, this gets us uh, capital below the cost of our equity, protects our cash for future investments, and even protects and allows us to continue to fund the dividend. And so they're saying, hey, this is a great way to go about raising capital to fund our expansion. By the way, this is not even including any aid from the CHIPS Act or where that may come into play. Or, or, but, or the mobile I, IPO. Or the mobile I, IPO. But I've been speaking any number of times when we talk about a leverage buyout, about direct capital. Uh, and the fact that the banks are no longer the provi uh, main providers oftentimes of capital to finance leverage buyouts. It's the Brookfields of the world, the areas of the world, the Black Zones of the world, the uh, Owl Creeks, on and on. This is the same thing, only a kind of a different desk, so to speak. It's infrastructure where they have an enormous fund and they are lending directly uh, and pushing out banks that might have come in at a higher number. Uh, in terms of what they wanted um, and yet are willing to do so because, of course, the returns that they're planning on getting, let's call it mid to high single digits perhaps, are plenty for the funds that they have in place. Interesting move here from Intel, and we can expect to see more of it from what I hear from those who worked on the deal. Five-year low for the stock. It's up today. Interesting that you mentioned the, di the dividend. They want people have been worried about the dividend. This is a very good solution. I know Mobileye is going to come, and I think it'll be exciting. The IPO market is completely dormant. Oh, so my gosh. We're, we're hungry for an IPO. Uh, Pat Gelsinger getting out of the hole. As you've said, these these plants take years oh, and take years. tens of billions to build. I mean, so Micron obviously also making, what was it, a $40 billion commitment over... Is it a 10-year period? And yet in the in medium term, or in the short term, they're not trying to buy anything because they want to be able to get the uh, inventory right. down. Uh, there's a conundrum about whether, you know, do you buy ASM? Uh, uh, the answer is I felt that, that Gary Dickerson answered a lot of questions on the AMAC call. And the intermediate term is so bright for these guys that you just have to get through this very short-term period, and you will be really rewarded by owning that stock and by owning Lamb Research, which I think is going to have a very good 2023, really good company. Tim Archer doing everything right. Uh, and the stock is off almost 300 points from its high. Very interesting story.